Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm very excited to be joined today by my friend, Jerry Nelson, who is the founder of True Diligence. With over 30 years of employee and tenant background check solutions and over 1,100 clients to date. How are you doing today, Jerry? Andy, I'm great. I really appreciate you having me today. Absolutely. I was looking forward to talking with you. You know, Jerry's company is actually featured as a partner solution on our Trucking Tower website. And I highly recommend all of you go out there and check out the testimonials and the value that Jerry's company is delivering in saving time, saving money and opening up new capabilities for clients. Today, we're gonna be talking about net promoter score. What is it? How does it work? How can a company utilize the information? For those unfamiliar, Jerry, what is the net promoter score? Yeah, Andy, so the, the net promoter score is a way of gauging client satisfaction. If we think about old school, I'll call it, client satisfaction surveys, you can recall a time when they had many, many questions gauging everything from products and services to client satisfaction. I think, I think in, in this era, the net promoter score has become the benchmark by which we gauge client satisfaction through a single question survey. And what it does is it asks your clientele uh, a single question on a survey. And that question is, how likely would you be to refer our company to a friend or colleague? And uh, respondents to that question gauge their responses on a score from one to 10. And your net promoter score then is basically derived from those responses to that single question. Absolutely. I, you know, I've had these surveys over the years that are 25 questions and you just tend to go, I, I don't have time <laughs> for that. But I like the methodology of the net promoter score. I think it gives you really valuable information. So, and I understand the average net promoter score is 44.0, whereas 80.0 and above is considered outstanding. And your company scored an 84.25, which is very impressive. Yeah, thank you so much. We're very, very, very proud of that. It's something that we work really hard at, and we are glad that that translates into the survey responses and the net promoter score. So yeah, as you touched on, uh, Research shows that the average net promoter score across all industries is somewhere around 44. Basically, the way that that gets calculated to, to put some, some clarity in that is the responses are broken into three categories. Um, if a respondent answers in the 9 to 10, which is the higher end of the scale, they are considered promoters. If they answer somewhere in the seven to eight scale, they are considered passives. And then anything from a one to a six uh, are considered detractors. And so basically your score, your net promoter score is calculated or derived by basically removing the passives because the research would show that they could go either direction in terms of a referral based on the whims of the day. So you consider them passives, you remove the detractors, from the path or from the uh, net promoters from your nines and tens, and that comes up to your net promoter score. And so that makes passives neutral. You've got your um, promoters and you remove your detractors from that to get to your net promoter score. And it's just an awesome way of, of calculating satisfaction. Absolutely. So going back a little ways, what made you guys decide to use this scoring system and feedback? Yeah, so that touches on something you said a minute ago, which which I do think is, is the core of that. In my experience, the, the net promoter model is certainly the most accurate way of gauging client satisfaction. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. I think one to what you touched on, I think your response rates are higher. You know, when your when your prospective respondents receive a link to the questionnaire or to the survey and they see one question, you're going to get a higher response rate. And obviously, we want as much data to go into this model as we can so that we can accurately calculate the net promoter score. And so I just really believe that the one question survey really does give you a better response rate and it answers the single question that we're most interested in. Right. How likely are you to refer our services to a friend or colleague? If the response to that is a resounding yes, it sounds to me like you're getting everything right. And if you've got detractors in that, then that will show in the answer to that question. Absolutely. No doubt. And, you know, we were also meeting recently, you and I, and you shared that you receive a lot of great testimonials and also ideas for roadmap projects 
as a part of these net promoter projects. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So in addition to the single question, we do ask one follow-up question, which is optional on the survey, which is a why question. You know, why did you rate us what you rated us, either positive or negative? It doesn't matter whether or not you're a promoter or a passive or a detractor. If you're willing to go free form and tell us why, we'd love to have that information. And so there is just a tremendous learning experience for us as a company in the responses to that question from those who took the time to answer, right? And right. so if you've got detractors that have experienced some sort of concern in their processes and they can voice that to you within the survey, what an opportunity is that to potentially take a detractor and turn them into a promoter? turn the frown into a smile, as people would say, right? And so, right. You know, and, and there are wonderful ideas that come out of there. Even people that are promoters that love the system sometimes have wonderful ideas of ways that you maybe could make an enhancement or, a, or, or an improvement to the, to the processes that would just, just change their world. And uh, there's wonderful opportunity in the survey if you can look at it through those, those lenses. Absolutely. You know, I, I worked in technology for about 25 years and um, getting that feedback from customers is so critical and seeing what you're doing really, really well and also getting ideas for things that you could even do better and uh, get more clients, new capabilities, all of those sorts of things. So what would you say are the top three or four tips for success in having satisfied clients? You know, it's an excellent question. You know, for us, it all boils down to customer service. And I think that that is that is that might be a little bit cliche, but it is so, so critically important in today's economy and in today's business world. Right. I mean, it's there is a lot of competition, irregardless of what the widget is that you make or the service you provide. There's a lot of competition and it really does boil down to customer service. I mean, it is just so critically important to focus on every touch with every customer every day and and make sure that they are having a positive overall user experience and I, and I think that's probably first and foremost I think probably secondly I think it's really important to keep in communication with your client base right let them know what you're doing in the background to help them sometimes they don't know that you right know, they, they, they get lost in the trudge and and they don't understand necessarily that you've improved something or you've changed something or you've implemented something. So stay in communication with them. You know, if you've got laws and regulations or policies or procedures that are very important to them, make sure they're aware that you know that and you're abreast of that and, and you're responding to changes in that environment. So I think the communication is, is certainly first and foremost. And, and then I also think probably third would be at least our approach is to try to really be a partner with our clients and not just a vendor. And there is a difference in the way that a person would look, I think, at that relationship. And if you truly can structure yourself to be a partner rather than just a preferred vendor or a chosen vendor, um, when you when you when you adopt the partner attitude, it really does change the way in which you approach your operations. Absolutely. You know, in my experiences uh, and across a lot of years, customer service is definitely key. Getting feedback and being in communication, in fact, perhaps even over communicating. Uh, I've never had somebody, a client say, you know, you're communicating with me too much. Like, you know, they want to know what's coming up, what's happening. Absolutely. And you guys keep on top of the regulations and what's happening in the world. And so I think that's extremely important as well. Yeah, technology has made that so easy nowadays, mm -hmm. right? I mean, staying in communication. I agree with that hundred percent. I've never had a client say you're sending us too much information. <laughs> you right. Know, they, Thing that you send as long as it's relevant is something that is very much appreciated and, and it helps them help 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 them be a better client and i think you can be a better a better service provider to them if you can master that absolutely and i think that's one of the keys to a good partner deliver value continuously deliver value if you uh, deliver value for a little while and then you drop off then their perception is oh they don't really care anymore that's right um, so it, it's really really critical so absolutely. This, uh, this last question, Jerry, is something that I ask all of my guests. So what would you say as a final word of advice for our friends out there listening or watching today? Oh, what an excellent question, Andy. Um, you know, I would say it kind of wraps into what I said just a moment ago, but it really is the key for me is to listen, right? I mean, I think 
that you need to listen. You need to listen to what your business is telling you. You need to listen to what your clients are telling you. You need to listen to what your peers are telling you and what's going on within the industry, you know, and obviously to that comes, you know, being responsive and learning to what you're hearing, um, you know, learning from what you're hearing. But, but I really do think that, you know, if, if you're going to take the time to, to do all of this communicating and all these surveys and, and, and to try to be a, to try to be a partner rather than just a vendor, you're only gonna you're only gonna meet that goal partially if if you really do not learn how to listen well to the incoming feedback that you're getting from all of those channels and and be responsive to that. You know, not all feedback has to be wonderful. The negative feedback can be just as positive as well. And so so really learn learn to listen. L listen to all aspects of your business and your employees and your and your your peers and your industry and and I think it will it will benefit you greatly. Absolutely. That is some great advice. I totally agree with that. You know, and I want to thank you again for coming on the show and talking about your insights, Jerry, and this topic. So thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. That's going to do it for our show today. Thanks for listening or watching, everybody. And we will see you again soon. Take care.